No. Claire? Claire! Yeah. Oh, Ugh. He's a guy. I guess you were right. I guess we waited too long. We waited too long? You're the one who wanted to make a dramatic entrance. Okay, I was gonna let her get all scared and everything, and then I was gonna run in, choke one of them in front of her, you know? It's just... Well, you failed miserably! It's just into a big mess. Hey, where Speaking are which, you I'll going? Go cleaned up. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dilophosaurus is back in the Jurassic franchise for the first time in like 30 years. And what happens to it? It gets choked out by a Navy SEAL. Hello everybody, Cooper here from Brooks Production Studios, back at it again with the toy reviews. Uh, you guys seem to really like them, thank you so much. Uh, this was actually requested by a commenter, I'll put up your name right here. Um, thank you for requesting this toy review, um, but I will make this very clear. This playset, I do not have completely, like 100% complete. I am missing one piece to this little set right here. We'll get more into that later. I've been really down in the dumps lately. I don't know what it is. I think it's seasonal burnout. I get this every summer. It's like, ugh, sort of a creative drag. Uh, it's really hard to maintain content, like, on a consistent basis. So I want to thank you guys for being so supportive. YouTube isn't all it's cranked out to be, you know, it's kind of, you know, stressful thinking, oh, should I upload this? Am I able to film this? I feel too tired today. Uh, I've been going through uh, some real burnout, and uh, I want to thank you guys for being so supportive of that. But enough mushy-gushy stuff. Let's get to the toy review. So I'm going to be reviewing this in two parts, the dinosaur and the accessory it comes with, and the human with the accessory it comes with. So first order of business, be gone, thought. Let's take a look at the Dilophosaurus. So taking a look at the Dilophosaurus itself, you can see it is actually very, very, very decently painted. I have to say, the painting on this figure, especially around the face and the frills, is top-notch. Everywhere else, but on the face and the frills, it is absolutely superb. Sculpting here, you can see the crests are very, very defined. I like how they're sort of shooting outwards from the face um, with the eye ridges and the nasal like gap right there. Uh, I like how the jaw is open like really distended so you can fit the, uh, of course, poison spit in there. I will say on the neck where the frills can like go in and out, there is a bit of a break in the sculpt. It looks like he kind of has deformed a neck. Uh, I would have liked it if it wasn't ingrated like that and like the frills were a separate piece that you could just pop on. Uh, excuse the band-aid, by the way. I had an accident last night. Uh, moving down the sculpt, you can see um, but even the back of the frills, sorry, I just hit my camera, even the back of the frills, all the individual folds and wrinkles, that looks really good. Again, the neck looks very weird, but um, look at that. Oh my god, that's incredible. That Now that is the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus, no doubt about it. Look at that sculpt. That is sculpted to perfection oh my god like this looks legitimately formidable uh, i will say the proportions are a bit goofy he has a really really skinny neck i don't know if that's entirely accurate and it's tiny arms i could have sworn uh the arms were on larger than this again with the body it looks like they had a really good sculpt and it was sort of watered down like the face and the frills are like sculpted to perfection the body is just meh i mean you can still see like the um the what you call it, the rib cage poking through. Uh, but other than that, just the scales and everything are just really watered down. There's a massive seam line running down the bottom all the way to the tip of the tail. And on the top, on the top, it's not so noticeable. On the bottom, yeesh, that does not look too good. Moving down to the legs, you can see again, really watered down sculpted detail, but it's there at least. Um, they've got the toenails again the it's really proportioned like it's got a big thigh and a little shin and then a big foot uh i don't really get the proportion like weirdness with this but um i mean it looks okay like from a distance you know it's not gonna make or break the figure i do kind of like how this one is sort of stretching out white and this one's like sort of bending backwards it looks like it's sort of walking forwards looks really cool The tail, again, like, there's barely any sculpted detail on the tail. Like, that's kind of 
kind of scary. There is a, like a like a wrinkle right there that shows the underbelly and where the uh, the top and the underbelly like connect, which is really cool. It's on a rounded tip. Don't know how accurate that is, but you know, whatever, it's there. Couldn't really notice any breaks in the sculpt except for, of course, the neck, which is, you know, kind of forgivable. And of course the uh, scan code, which let me get it out right now. Ah, uh, there it is. Scan code right there. So you can scan that, have that in focus. Scan that and have Dilophosaurus in your park today. So yeah, for a smaller figure, I really can't knock the sculpt. The sculpt is really good. It is kind of weird in some places where, you know, proportions aren't that great. Uh, but um, really, there aren't that many breaks in the sculpt. It looks really good, especially for like a children's thing and like not professional like amber collection or hammer collection. This is a really good sculpt. I really like this. However, the same cannot be said for the paint job. Like I said, on the face, especially the frills, the paint job, absolutely stunning. Like, look at this. Look at just the face alone. Look at the individual black lines on the frill, or on the crest, excuse me. Like, the individual black lines on the crest. What? The, like, the airbrushing, like, from the green on the muzzle to the black on the face. Let me get that in focus. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? The golden little sparkle on the eye with the tiny itty bitty pupil going in. Like, that is some really, really good detail. My camera does not want to focus. What the fuck? These frills are absolutely incredible. It has this sort of gloss finish over it, which makes it look slimy and gross. But that's awesome because Dilophosaurus is slimy and gross. You can see the careful, like, airbrushing from the brown to the orange to the red on the crest and the pattern it's in. Oh my god, that's absolutely incredible. Looks more like the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus than anything. However, when we get to the body, things start to get a whole lot worse. Again, Mattel, it's two colors. It's this, like, I don't know, puke green and this dull black all over, like, the figure. Hand nails aren't painted, toenails aren't painted, and the tail is just a piece of rubber. A piece of stiff, hard rubber that is just black. I give up. They don't even airbrush, like, at all. Like, it's literally just a pattern on that. Like, what the heck? There's airbrushing on the frill, which shows it is possible, so why couldn't you airbrush that? I feel like the entire budget for painting this figure was blown on the frill alone, which is sort of justified, but I mean, you've got a whole rest of a figure to paint. Like, come on. I mean, it was fine the first few times, but this is going on for four years now, just a generic pattern put on over a solid color. Like, no shading, no, no nothing. So the painting and sculpting on this figure are pretty meh, but now let's talk articulation. Sadly, the jaw is stuck open, although it is sort of a squishy rubber, uh, so you can sort of uh, force it, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. However, the frills are on a hinge, so they can go like that to make it normal, and that to make it aggressive. The arms are on a swivel at the base of the shoulder, which allows for a full 360. And the legs are on a swivel, which allows for a full 360. And that's it. No, I'm not kidding. That's it. No neck articulation, no mouth articulation, no tail articulation. This figure is really disappointing in everything except for paint. They didn't even have the common decency to put a lot of articulation on this figure. I give up. So overall, this Dilophosaurus figure is pretty hit or miss. The sculpting's really good, the painting is hit or miss, and the, the articulation is pretty below average. However, this Dilophosaurus has one saving grace. It comes with an accessory. This is a little, like, blast of Dilophosaurus poison. It is colored very, very dark green. It comes out like light green uh, on camera, but it's actually way darker than this. Um, the sculpting is pretty okay. It looks like liquid shooting out of like a water gun or something, which makes sense for Dilophosaurus. Uh, I feel like if it's going to be Dilophosaurus, it should be black, uh, but it's dark green. I don't really get that, but it's okay. It's sort of like a translucent sort of plastic, um, which is really cool. 
bendable? No, would not recommend bending this, it's breakable. But something you might have noticed on the Dilophosaurus, if it'll focus, he has a little hole in his mouth. So you can peg the venom into, oh, you can peg the venom into his mouth, having him spit it. That is cool. I think I would have preferred if there was some sort of mechanism inside the figure that allowed it to shoot out this venom, or maybe if, like, the venom went all the way to the back of its head, and, like, you could, like, push the venom out, like, oh, doesn't stick in that well. Like, you should, could sort of, like, push the venom out, like the Jurassic Park 3 stuff, and have it, like, shoot. That'd have been a cool idea. But overall, this Dilophosaurus figure, it's pretty hit or miss. I'd say it's pretty average for, like, a Mattel dinosaur. Um, I would recommend picking it up by itself, but don't spend, like, over five bucks on this, because I don't really think it's worth it. But, of course, this is not sold individually. It's sold on a set with this. So now we're going to be taking a look at a walking stereotype. I mean, ginger girl who can't act. I mean, Hollywood's laziness personified it. I mean, Claire Deering from Jurassic World. Oh, my God, that was a lot of synonyms for the same thing. Anyway, Claire... Wow. Claire here is actually looking pretty good in action figure form. Again, the Mattel figures aren't really my style, but I can't deny that this is really well made. You can tell by the individual strands of hair that was sculpted in, you can tell the people making this really cared about this figure. Her outfit is very similar to the one she wears in Dominion, like the very deep teal uh, jacket with the purple undershirt. Um... Her face is uh, kind of accurate to Bryce Dallas Howard. I can't really say it looks all that much like her, but, I mean, it passes. The black jeans, uh, they look like they're sort of shiny in some places. It looks like she was in water. Maybe this is after she falls in the swamp with the Therizinosaurus. Her outfit overall is very basic. As you can see, she's got a brown belt with her uh, undershirt. It almost looks like a sweatshirt because uh, of the individual wrinkles in it. With her sleeves rolled up, you can see the wrinkles in that. And you can even see her boots, which thankfully replace the high heels. The painting on this figure is also rather exceptional. It looks really dark on camera, but let me tell you, this figure really pops. It's very Bryce... Bryce. It's very Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, I will say she looks a little bit pale, uh, especially compared to her movie counterpart. She's a little bit pale. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if it's just mine, but she looks a little bit pale. Not that big a complaint. Uh, I only noticed one paint mistake. It's like right on the neck and my camera cannot focus today. It's like right there on the neck. You can barely, yeah, you can see it right there. There's a little glob of red on her neck, but that's so minute and minuscule. You can't even notice it. Again, there's some weird paint application on the, uh, on the pants, it's all the same grayish black color, but there's gloss in some areas and matte in others. As you can see there, it's like in a circle pattern. I don't know if that's supposed to be like watermarks, like she got wet. Please don't take that out of context. But overall, painting and sculpting on this figure is pretty good, especially for a Mattel figure. Now going on to articulation, which is standard for a Mattel human figure. A ball joint at the head, it's kind of restricted by the hair, but you can still work it in there. A universal joint at the base of the shoulder, which allows for a swivel and a hinge. Universal joint at the elbow, which allows for a swivel and a hinge. A swivel at the waist, which can provide a full 360 if you want her to be in the exorcist. Universal joint at the hip, which allows it to go out. Universal joint at the knee, which allows for a full rotation and nothing at the ankles. So overall, for an action figure representation of Claire from Jurassic World Dominion, I can't really knock it. It's really accurate and really poseable. Again, Mattel is not really my style of action figure, but I'm sure kids are going to love this. But that's not all. Oh no, she comes with accessories. She comes with a rifle and, uh, uh, okay, I have a confession to make. This set is not complete. I do not have everything with this set. I bought it new in the store, but I lost something. Claire actually comes with two accessories. Yes, this rifle and a little radio. I'll put up a picture right here. 
she comes with a radio with a little sticker printed on it like she's tracking dinosaurs or something. It's painted like a beigeish brownish color, I think, if I remember correctly. And it's supposed to fit in her hands. And it actually does. It fits really well in her hands. But I lost it when it was floating around in a storage container. I don't know where it is. Uh, so I don't have this set complete. But I will say that little accessory, it's a nice addition. Nice sculpted detail, little thing, easily can get lost. <laughs> However, I do have the rifle that she comes with. I don't know, does anybody know their guns in the audience? I don't really know what kind of gun this is. I mean, I guess it kind of looks like a sniper rifle or like a hunting rifle or something. I mean, with the scope up top and the more narrow uh, barrel. I don't know, It's sort of, it looks like it's pump action, actually, because that sort of slides into the cylinder. I don't know, it's painted. Uh, one sort of color. It's actually the same color as the Dilophosaurus, which is kind of weird. Uh, nice sculpted detail, uh, but not really much to say about it. It's just a gun. It doesn't fire anything. It's just a plastic gun. Eh? Is that like a aiming sort of thing? I don't know. Don't try doing this with a bandaid on your thumb. It's really fucking hard. So we've gone over sculpting, painting, accessories, and articulation on both figures. Now let's compare them to some other figures in my collection. What my retarded ass is trying to say is let's do some size comparisons. Here they are compared to the Jurassic uh, Park Legacy Collection Jeep uh, released in 2020 I believe. Uh, it was a later edition and already you can see the similarities to the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus. This one proves like this looks just like the Dennis Nedry scene. Oh my god. This is reminding me of Jurassic Park the game, actually. You know, when Nima Cruz is trying to get it. And does anybody even know what that game is? It's when Nima Cruz is trying to retrieve the Barbasol can and the Dilophosaurus herd attacks her when she's trying to get in the Jeep. It's a really good game. No, it's not. I lied. Here they are compared to the Allosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion, which I know a lot of you have. So this comparison might actually be valid. Look at that. Look, I, can, I can just imagine that being a movie scene. Here's Robert Muldoon compared to Claire Daring, and he's just a freaking giant. I mean, goddamn, he looks like an NBA player compared to <laughs> freaking Claire. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of a ginger. And here they are compared to last time's review, the Therizanosaurus. It's so big, it doesn't even fit in frame. But uh, yeah, just imagine Claire's underwater. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. <laughs> the they're roaring down at her. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate to the movie. Great playability with these three. I'd see, let's see this being a playset. That's pretty valid. And with that, that concludes my review. Oh, oh God, she's fired! Get down! And overall, that concludes my review of the Jurassic World Dominion Claire and Dilophosaurus 2-pack released by Mattel. Overall, I would say to definitely pick it up, especially if you're a fan of Jurassic World, in which case, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm joking. If you're a fan of Jurassic World and you don't have a Claire Daring figure or you want to get this pack specifically for Dominion, uh, I would say you definitely should pick it up. It comes with an exceptional dinosaur figure, which in all honesty, isn't that bad. It's just a little underwhelming and an excellent human figure, which <laughs> is awesome. Again, Mattel is not really my style, but I can't deny that this is a great playset. Does this count as a playset or a two-pack? I don't know. I'm not exactly the most professional YouTube channel on this <laughs> site. I don't really know all my uh, buzzwords. But overall, I would definitely recommend you pick this set up. It comes with a good human figure with good accessory. Z and it comes with a really good dinosaur figure, which I know kids are going to have fun putting these two together. Uh, against each other, especially if you want to recreate that scene from Dominion. So I got this set for roughly 14 bucks to 15 bucks. Uh, I wouldn't really say that's worth it considering what you're paying for and what you're getting. I would definitely say this set is worth 10 bucks. Uh, but I mean, 15, I think that's pushing it a little bit. Uh, considering, you know, you only get a dinosaur, a human, and a few accessories. I think this should be more around 11 to $10 range. But, you know, whatever floats your boat, Mattel. I would definitely recommend this figure, two-pack, whatever the heck this classifies as, to uh, any Jurassic Park fan, to collectors, to kids, to, like, I, I, this is good for everybody, is what I'm trying to say, but I'm fucking it up. <laughs>
So, yeah, that was my review of the Jurassic World Dominion Claire and Dilophosaurus 2-pack. Uh, let me know what other figures you would like to see reviewed. I'm always open to uh, suggestions. Somebody told me I might want to pick up Lego sets for Jurassic World Dominion next time. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, I don't know. I do know that the fourth toy hunt is coming up, so stay tuned for that. Um, but as for now, just recommend toy uh, reviews and I'll do them. Uh, we are really close to a 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and if we do reach that milestone, before the end of the summer, I will show my entire Jurassic Park collection. Uh, that video will have to wait until, like, mid-August, however, but it will come. So overall, I want to thank you guys again. Let me know what other stuff you want to see reviewed. And um, as for now, I'm Cooper from Brooks Production Studios. Have a good day, everyone. Oh, we still recording? Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to rate this figure because I'm a raging retard. Uh, 8 out of 10. Uh, it's a pretty good set for kids, comes with a good human figure, good dinosaur, but the painting and sculpting is kind of hit or miss on the dinosaur and the accessories are a little bit lackluster. Uh, yeah, 8 out of 10, would definitely recommend, just don't overpay for it. Okay, bye.